I V M. There has been a lot of noise about the Internet of Things or IoT and its impact on our lives. There are now billions of physical devices around the world that are now connected to the Internet. From something as small as an AirPod to something as big as a plane, all are collecting and sharing data. However, more devices and more data means more complexity. Intel helps you counter this complexity by letting you do more with less. IoT solutions from Intel fuse the power of edge and cloud computing with advanced orchestration to speed insights that help maximize revenue and reduce costs while revealing new ways to compete, win, and build your business of tomorrow. To learn more about how you can connect the unconnected in an end-to-end -end IoT solution built using the secure, scalable, and manageable Intel IoT platform, visit intel.in. Hey everyone, welcome to Shunya One, episode 157. How are you doing, Amit? How's it going? I'm good, man. I'm good. I got the red background. Hopefully, this is the last time I'm the red background without you having another red background behind you. Too. Yes, or another color like you mentioned last time. Well, yeah, there is another color. But uh, but I think that uh, the way it's set up, both of us would have the red backgrounds. The other colors would oh. be visible from a different camera. Oh, but our personal cameras would show the red cam uh, would show the red backgrounds. Interesting. But interesting. We'll, 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 we'll figure this is out. Is this something to do with Pratidipi branding creeping in? Dude, uh, IVM branding has always been red as well, but it is Pratidipi uh -huh. branding. It is IVM branding. It is red nice. is a color that we all use, right? So yes, I it is. I, um, I like it. It's, it's actually clever type branding too now. <laughs> so ah, I like it. Ah, there you go. I like it. <laughs> interesting, interesting. Yes. But that's also another interesting uh, conversation we have today. And uh, very, very, uh, I would say, not so, um, not so usual kind of conversation. In the second half, at the start of the second half, he dropped a fact which just blew my mind. Right? I don't want to spoil it for people, but I, I, I still yeah. can't get over it, right? I mean, like, how <laughs> does that happen? But it <laughs> apparently does, right? So let's not do yes. spoilers. No let's spoilers. Kind of like, you know, yeah, let's push people to get to the second half of the episode. But this happens like when the first few minutes of the second half, and I was just like, what? But yeah, that was yes. it was a fun yes. conversation, though. Yes, we're talking to uh, Rohit Mangzik, uh, founder and CEO of Edu Gorilla. Uh, and, uh, you know, apart from the very cool name, uh, there's a lot of interesting facets of uh, this this interesting ed tech startup, uh, which I'm sure you guys will love listening to. So let's take a break and come back and jump right in. Hey, Amit, how's it going? What have you been up to? I'm doing well, man. Continue to read up on like, you know, these Intel case studies that we've been talking about for the last few weeks, right? Really one amazing yeah. example after another. Really? So what's got your attention this week? So I was looking at some of the full stack solutions that Intel's been deploying, right? What they call edge to the cloud. Yes, I have heard about that program. They actually did some work with uh, Audi, right? Yeah, Audi is one of the really, really cool examples. So uh, basically what used to happen is Audi used to pull one out of a thousand cars out to manage QC, right? That's basically one car every day. Mm -hmm. Now, Audis are expensive cars, right? So they're clearly not happy about destroying a car every day. Uh, and so, you know, they're, they're, it's, it's way too costly. Yeah, and it's also, I mean, I imagine not the most effective way of doing things either, right? I mean, it tells you very little about what the other 999 cars that pass through uh, was, what was, whether they're okay or not. Yeah, no, and so Intel deployed a solution, what they call from the edge to the cloud, right? So the solution basically involved robotic welding systems, which they combined with an algorithmic approach, right? And what this resulted in was like an end result was essentially accurate insights into what, ha what was happening on the floor. And this allowed wow. them to be much more effective. Wow. Okay. I got to check this one out too. Uh, this is also on intel.in. Yep. Go for this one and a whole lot more other really interesting case studies. You can go to intel.in and read up on this stuff and see how businesses are working with Intel today. Hey, Rohit. How are you doing? Welcome to Shunya One. Hey, hi, Shilat. And hi, Amit. Pleasure to be over here. And thanks. Thanks so much for making the time. I know uh, it's... Uh, Busy day as usual. Uh, I'm sure it's a busy day as uh, usual in every entrepreneur's life. Uh, but, uh, you know, you're one of the, probably the first person uh, for a founder we are talking to who is running a, a entire startup. And of course, you know, I want we want to hear more about the journey. Uh, but you're based out of Lucknow is what you mm -hmm. said, right? Right, 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 right. That's correct. And sure, your that's... entire team is well. <laughs> Right, 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 right. So uh, all the employees, so eighty percent of our employees who work from office, they yeah they work from our head office in Lucknow. Uh, for twenty percent of our employees, that 
the talent which is really tough to hire right mm-hmm. uh, yeah we have them globally not only in india but outside india as well wow interesting wow and what's yeah, the journey been like you know like what's been the origin of this if you could tell us a little bit about yourself sure. and then of course how you got into edu gorilla and of course i will ask the most common question you get why edu gorilla uh, <laughs> but i'll let you explain that in your own words sure 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 so the journey began in 2010 uh, i was studying in second year of btec in nit suratkal and over there for chud like got an internship in i am dabad and over there i happened to visit, uh, meet apj abdul kalam and that was a turning point of my life uh, there was a good 3 to 4 hour uh, discussion with him and he motivated me okay um, early that's the thing that was there in my genes and when i talked with him it came out so mm-hmm. um yeah so he motivated me i is a first startup in this college which was into web solutions and it went for 2 years but slowly i realized that i wanted to get into the product sector so in finally i started my first second company which was into career counseling and uh, i ran it for 3 years and uh, i in the meantime i did job as well so i worked with oracle morgan stanley and de show mm-hmm. so back in 2016 when i was working with de show I happened to visit my school in Folkhabar, Uttar Pradesh, and mm-hmm. over there, my juniors grabbed me, asking, "Bhaiya, what's the right school? What's the right coaching center? How to increase right. the chance of getting a government job?" So, uh, those questions intrigued me. So, how I can get an impact in the society? So, I left my job. I found that that's my calling. So, mm-hmm. when I left my job, I sh- I came back to my hometown in Folkhabar. I started at Goilo. with the prime idea of can i bring all the schools coaching centers study mat here under one umbrella so mm-hmm. in the first year i list around 60000 coaching centers and 8 lakh 40000 schools and um around 60000 study material as well and within a year we started getting around 1 million footfalls on our web- website every month so that came out wow. successful but somehow i was not able to create an impact in the society so uh, I, the impact metrics was missing so we did four pivots with a prime idea of how can i increase the success rate of those students then in november mm-hmm. 2018 we started the test series vertical where mm-hmm. the idea was ki if we can create mock test the questions mm-hmm. that have have a very high probability of, to come in the actual exam can i increase, can i give those questions to the students can i help them to solve them uh, can i translate those questions in the native language so that's how i started the test series vertical and recently we have converted it into a full fledged learning solution so we got uh, books we got video courses we got test series we got uh, notes and everything so wow. right now i'm 24000 users users in daily basis we got 1500 exams with us and in doing the whole journey right so uh we got six patents as well so far for the last 3 years Is when it? we shot the test series and the biggest problem that we found over here was um uh, government releases the notification 30 days before the exam so 45 mm-hmm. days before the exam and most of companies take on 30 days just to hit the market with the content so students have only 15 days to study from so mm-hmm. we wanted to bridge that gap and in doing that uh six patents were the by product and we have we have been able to decrease the 30 days window to 5 days so as soon as exam notification is out in the fifth day uh students get the content uh they are able to access it to our books to our website app and all that wow that's a lot of uh, innovation that you you know spoke about in this uh, in this journey and of course you said that the test series product first sort of started in 2018 yes. 2018 was when I mean, edtech was already around. Obviously, edtech has become huge in the past year, year and a half. But uh, you know, what made you sort of jump into this in the first place? Saying, you know, you'll do one more uh, sort of uh, play uh, at you know solving people's uh, exam uh, exam test series, test prep, basically as the right. sector is right. So when I made a deep dive into the segment, I found that. Every one knows about IIT J. You need, uh, mm-hmm. and IIT J has only fourteen lakh applicants. But the ex- 
students for the government job. So, for example, for Uttar Pradesh TET, that's for the primary school teacher vacancy in Uttar Pradesh. Uh, mm -hmm. Around 25 lakh students for that exam just for 5,000 jobs. Or for MP police constable, around 23 lakh students for that exam just for 6,000 jobs. So, these exams mm -hmm. are even tough, tougher than uh, the well-known exams in India, IT, IT mm -hmm. need, mm -hmm. CAT, and all that. And they're not targeted. No, no big player is focusing on them. That's the first problem. And second, the ones who are who have a focus on them, uh, they don't have the impact metrics with them. They just provide the content. They just provide you with the videos. But the end-to-end mm. -end, uh, loop closer, as you said, uh, is mm. not there in the segment. So uh, the impact metrics was missing over here. So when we came in over here, the whole idea was we might not target the whole country, but we might have a subset to that. But our students should have much higher chance of selection than anyone else. So across the sector, only 19 out of 10,000 students get the job. And in Edigoyla, 740 out of 10,000 students get the job. So we increase the chance of selection by 14 times. So that's the oh, wow. number that we boast about. And that's the only metrics that we have. So why why are other larger ed, uh, edutech players not uh, focusing on this? Right, I mean, like you mentioned, that being the first part of the equation, what 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 prevents them? Because again, I mean, like you know, some of these folks have raised mad amounts of money. They have really really capable folks over there. What uh, uh, you know, what what makes it. Uh, what 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 makes this a sector, or what makes this a series of exams which they're not uh, pushing? Sure. What so, are, what are the challenges that you sure. feel that you know that they are letting go and allowing you the opportunity to kind of uh, uh, allowing is not a good word, but you know what I mean. Sure. 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 So the biggest concern lies with the uh, just in time model. So government releases the notification just forty five days before the exam, and. Mm. Go uh, they, in, in, our, in our country, we get on 4,000 exam notifications every year. So a company cannot focus on all 4,000 4, of them. They have to be very selective. Mm -hmm. And the selection process itself, you should take on three to four days. And then when they figured out, okay, that's the exam that they want to venture into, they need around 20 to 25 days to develop the content. And then around seven days to uh, make that content available to the students. So the whole process used to take on 30 to 25 days to hit the market. Hmm. And that's the same problem across all the companies in India, whether at tech or a publisher or a coaching center, all of them. Hmm. And uh, conventionally, if you go with the conventional method, if you do it manually, if, for example, if you have to check whether you will get the right ROI in any exam, uh, if you do it manually, if you work on your gut feeling, if you collect the data manually, it will easily take three to four days. So hmm. what we did was, uh, since I came from a, a hedge fund and whole IT stuff around me, uh, my co-founder is a big shot AI ML guy. So uh, the pr thought process was, can I bring in technology? Can I leverage AI ML to, make sh to, get, to do all these redundant tasks um, using our software? So the first step, which we should take on three to four days for company to understand whether they, they should venture into any exam, we take only one and a half days. The second step to develop the content, we so in the first step we got two patents. Then uh, in the second step where we develop the content, we are able to leverage the existing data bank that we have, the existing videos and everything. So through that we are able to venture into any exam in one to two, one to three days, which most of companies take on twenty to thirty and five days. So and over there as well we got two patents, and then to hit the market. Uh, for example, if you're a publication house, you will print one lakh copies of that book. You will send it to your distributors, and then distributor will send it to the shopkeepers, and then Ashwin can buy it from there. We, we'll, For example, we leverage just-in-time printing. So if you order my book from Amazon, in the first two hours, a PDF file will be generated. In the next three hours, uh -huh. it will be printed and bind it together, and it will be shipped to those steps in two days. So we have removed the whole redundant processes over there. It's all tech driven. And when we have tech, wow. we are able to, uh, so for example, uh, we use more engage internally. And through that, we are able to uh, tap in, into each and every activity of the user. OK, uh, we bucket the users in different categories, and then we target them based on their performance. And then we got more, and we get more and more individualized with our students. So that's how we are able to deliver the impact over there. 
Very cool. I mean, of course, I'm fa absolutely familiar with personalization, uh, like you mentioned, and I think you know doing it at scale is always the challenge, right? I, 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 and what you mentioned, the the six patterns, I think uh, they're all sort of like you said, tech patterns, which means you're actually using uh, technology to do very deep, you know, all of these processes which you typically, which others typically just take for granted as grunt work, uh, faster. Right. Uh, right. At the same time, you also mentioned like, is, is this uh, and then you have this entire team, right, in uh, Lucknow, like you said, the entire team. So how is your tech team sort of uh, distributed? What are the kind of folks you have on your end solving for edtech? Uh, because it sounds like you are really heavy on the tech side of education while also sure. solving very unique educational aspects of the problem. Sure, sure. So being in Lucknow, it has been helpful for us uh, in terms of tech hiring because uh, for all the students in the vicinity of Lucknow who don't want to travel to uh, other uh, cities, right? There's always a big chunk of those students, of those employees who want to do that. Uh, for them, Edigola is probably one of the best destinations to work with. The pearls, the cherries that we have is probably one of the best in this uh, locality. So that's one way how we are able to attract good talent pool in tech. That's the first part. Second is uh, my co-founder, Shashwat. He he's a billion AI ML guy. He he's seen us in deep, deep learning and all that. So he has been more uh, taking your feature and every every innovation that we have towards the tech. The second part. Uh, the third uh, goes in with respect to the uh, local connect. So the highest number of applicants for government jobs come from UP, Bihar, Jharkhand, and all of that. And since we are Based out of Lucknow, we are able to interact with our students in daily basis. They come to our office, they we talk to them, we ask them, okay, do you like our product? Is it getting an impact in any question, in any text, in any video? If they're not able to understand, we get the feedback there and there. We don't have to travel to other places. We the students are next door. So that is probably the third major factor that has helped us in creating the right impact. So we know, okay, if we are able to if it, writing even a single word is it are our students going to consume it or not nice nice and you know uh, you know before we go into the details of the tech and the sure. product a little bit more like how has the scaling for this been like you started out with those initial test series a few of those exams uh it's been like uh you know three four years since then how have you exactly scaled this like what's been the vision to scale it uh, or if i may ask sure so yeah, in the state vernacular exams, the scale is always a challenge for all the companies that have ventured into it because the pattern of the government jobs, they change very frequently. There's no often, cyclicity yeah. over there. And um, they are- So you can reuse the same content basically. Exactly. Which others and do, they are yeah, 28 states. Exactly. And they are 28 states and eight union territories. And each of them has 20, 84 departments. And each department comes with four different types of vacancies every year. So there's a lot of unorganized data that flows in over there. So the first idea over there was, can we leverage uh, deep learning to get everything in under one umbrella and then take out meaningful information over there? So for example, if we have to select uh, which, which exam should I venture into? What will exams sh uh, should be in our purview for the current month? Uh, there's no human that, that, that tells it to us. It's a software uh, that does all the calculation and then give us the number. Okay, all these exams we shall venture into. That's the place where we'll be able to wow. get the highest impact. So yeah, uh, over there tech has been able to help us, number one. The second factor over there was, um, um, was the hybrid learning. So in every video. So all our videos are connected with our test series and test series are connected with our notes. So it's a complete solution that we give it to our student. So the way we have internally structured it is uh, there's no nothing works in silos. Uh, mm -hmm. So if you take a subscription, you get the whole bunch of uh, uh, knowledge bits from each and every tool we have combined into one solution. So that is the second thing that has helped us.
and you know uh, you know again before the the obvious question i guess i think you were tell, sure. sharing anecdotally earlier like why are you gorilla uh, and sure. is this what you by the way started out with on day 1 also uh, yeah. was it always the plan was it always the name in fact i did so when i started uh, the whole thought process was uh, the education sector in india is enormous right we got 26 crore students in india um, and around 7.5 crore students write the state level com uh, competitive exams and can and to move that so no one has been able to historically move the whole segment as such right so mm -hmm. to create an impact you need something really massive something that is transcend something so which a student can resonate and gorilla is a symbol of that so it's massive it stands for transparency so that's how we got gorilla edu and gorilla so that's how that's why most of our uh, internal software internal um, products for coaching centers as well they are named as um, gibbon for example it's uh, the same breed uh, of uh, gorilla nine, nine. we got tibbat gorilla wow. lives in a uh, mountain so we got tibbat <laughs> over there and all that wow so it's a nice theme you guys got going right. on your right. internal stuff as well but you know rohit everything you've just shared shows that obviously the massive opportunity uh, right. that edtech in general has right uh, and you guys have been doing this for some time you've gone very deep in uh, so many things that you just shared right going deep as in the process going deep in the even choosing which exams to go after uh, right. yeah is something you guys seem to have automated and scaled so uh, you know what is that i would say you know how do you 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 obviously are a big believer in metrics and you know tracking everything and measuring everything so mm -hmm. uh you mentioned you close the loop as well right so mm -hmm. that means you do test prep and test series so do you do you also look at like uh the other two side the other sides of the system like you know admission application like the how how do you ensure that you know you're a you play a significant part of the students life cycle for whichever exam that they are uh, participating in sure so as i mentioned we cover the 360 degree aspect of uh till the time you clear the, you get the government job so the first part that prevails over there is the status of like, government jobs there even that information did you, did you is not did you have to like yeah did you have to like officially be a like part of the, the since you, sorry to interrupt the, the, sure, the sure. did you have to be an official part of the empanelment with the government or something like this to get access to anything like this or is this all are you working off of just public data and public apis and what not uh we are working on the public data i uh, officially we you cannot be a part of all that um all the government agencies right so there are 28 states and 8 union territories and each of right. them has 84 departments you, you can't be part of each of them so uh over there we in fact we got four people just to look out for the information uh of what all the vacancies are coming up what's happening in the market wow. and then give us put that data in the system okay that's what is happening there's a lot of unorganized information right it's an uncharted territory so far so we are able to collect all that information and then we give it transparently to our students so uh, right from the gathering the information of which exam they should focus on to mm. clearing the exam and then we have a mock interview segment where if you have cleared the exam you get mock interviews free of cost and over there you can talk with our faculties you can talk with our um, experts who have cleared the, those exams in the past and you can get the interview tips and then go for an interview so till the time you get a government job you, we are with you wow wow i want to i want to dig a little deeper into uh, you know some of the aspects of this because it's very different from the traditional edtech like you mentioned right. uh, and i'm sure the the student base you deal with is also uh, fairly unique in what their you know aspirations and needs and everything so but we're going to take a quick break uh, sure. and come back and talk some more with Security on a computer is like a layered cake. No matter how secure each layer may be, attackers and hackers will work tirelessly to find a vulnerability and exploit it. These cyber attacks can sneak into a system unnoticed, eventually gaining access to all the programs and files on your computer stack. Luckily, with the Intel V Pro platform, all of this is avoidable. Intel V Pro has the Intel Hardware Shield, 
which adds protection to every layer of the computer system with three groups of security capabilities. Advanced Threat Protection, which helps quickly detect and remediate the latest ransomware and crypto mining attacks on the system. Below the OS Security, which helps identify unauthorized changes to hardware and firmware. And Application and Data Protection, which helps prevent memory corruption and malware injection. So secure your organization's productivity with hardware-based security only with Intel vPro. Visit www.intel.in slash itheroes to know more. Intel vPro, built for business. Hey, welcome back, everyone. And uh, Rohit, uh, you know, you've been sharing so much about, you know, the journey so far and the kind of unique uh, value prop that Edugorilla does. Uh, could you tell us a little more about, you know, uh, exactly how you're still sort of trying to differentiate from the rest of this uh, edtech market now, right? Uh, now that you have, you know, significant, I would say, uh, you know, in entrenchment, entrenchment into this base, you've seen, uh, uh, you're obviously you've brought to the fa front foot front foot that uh, you know this this market is massive these unique state wise exams and these very different sort of sliver of uh, you know education requirements are still big enough to run a business so has this attracted the rest of the more uh, you know visible ed tech community is do you see increased competition getting into these places and if yes how do you continue to in, you know stay i would say ahead of the curve yeah, with that sure sure so shall i say uh, each and every acti um, activity that we do even if even if you meet the department heads in adigoila uh, mm -hmm. you'll find that each and every member in the company is different uh, it's completely unconventional the, right from the way we acquire the user the branding the way how we deliver our content and everything so for example uh, Across that tech, you might have heard that uh, the CAC was between 1500 to 2500 rupees. Yes. And in Adigo yes. we have been able to increase, decrease it to less than 300 rupees. Uh, we got books wow. uh, and we are not a conventional publication house. Uh, still, we got 350 books with us and we are able to sell more than 20,000 books every month. Uh, then hmm. we got some 1500 odd apps on Play Store. Uh, you haven't seen that many apps. Wait, 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 how, sorry, how many did you just say? Fifteen hundred plus apps on place. One thousand five hundred apps. Right, right. Yeah, right. that's what and I was just. That, I was just what? remembering. Yes. Right, and to do that, we have only one person that takes care of all the fifteen hundred apps with us. Wait, and, wait the, I, I'm just trying to get my head around that. You have fifteen hundred apps. That's correct. Uh, and, uh, uh, sorry, Rohit, explain yourself. Why do you have fifteen hundred apps? Sure, 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 sure. So I'm, I'm, sure, sure, I'm sure. sorry, I should have known that. Sure. Okay. Right. Right. So I will, I, I will give you both uh, yeah. operational aspect and the marketing aspect. Why do we have it? Okay. So the, with respect to marketing, uh, if you search for any exam on Play Store, you will probably land up in our app. My wife, uh, mm. she was preparing for one exam and she didn't know that Edigola provides it. And she searched for that exam on Play Store, and she found Edugola app over there. Uh, hmm. There's just a uh, case on Monday, on <laughs> three days back. So uh, <laughs> that is one way for us to do the user acquisition. It comes at a very low cost, customer acquisition cost. Hmm. And in terms of operations, right? Uh, you might have, you might think, okay, for fifteen hundred apps, I might have ten so people working on that, right? So hmm. there's a conventional way if you want to manage so many apps. In Edugola, we have. A, one resource uh, for this project who takes care of all the 15 apps right from publishing the mm -hmm. exam to publishing a new app to updating updating it and everything uh, the core idea is uh, when you install our app the code base is same you end up in using the main app of Edigoila. it's just the right. listing Shell that happens different. over there right so that is one way how we are able to do the user acquisition at a very low cost Oh, okay. Um, so it's like uh, one of the uh, what? What are those called? Uh, like Twitter is right now uh, progressive web app type things, right? So it's basically the same app being played on like all these different surfaces. You're, so it's basically server driven rather than app driven, if that makes sense. Not yeah, I mean, I'm not sure if the, of the architecture being like that, but yeah, ultimately, or I think the users all get acquired on the same backend. Exactly. Right. Well, no, I, I thought you said same code base, which is why I thought that, right? You you, you said same code right. base, right? For the app itself? Same code base. Yeah. Okay. So right. yeah. 
uh, yeah, probably we can go, we can have a deep dive over there. But uh, it's not uh, the all the code base is on our server. There is a huh. code base for our apps as well, and okay. it still be able to do it. Hmm. That's the idea. So all the apps wow. are native apps, and uh, yeah, and this is um, interesting. We, it, yeah. Yeah, no, sorry, sorry, no, it's just giving me ideas. Should we create apps for every one of our shows? Question? <laughs> you can, in fact. Yeah, yeah, I, yeah. I, it's a very interesting strategy. And to be honest, is, I've not yeah. seen too many people do it. Uh, I remember, Rohit, like I said, having seen that, you know, and found it very unique, uh, trying to understand why. And now you've shared the reason why. So user acquisition, right? So uh, when right. someone searches for that particular exam, yeah. they find the app. And they inherently become part of, uh, you know, the community. The that you build. Correct. Right. So, exactly. so now that this has become so popular, right? Like the uh, earlier question I was asking is like, how do you, you know, uh, obviously there's big business here, right? You mm -hmm. guys are right. making revenue. Uh, you have low cost of acquisition. It sounds too good to be true, right? It's a, sure. it's a great mix of, and it's a great sort of India story as well, because you're addressing probably a lot of tier two, tier three, uh towns uh, with all of these uh, students from these towns so how do you stay ahead of the curve and how is this uh, has this and uh, you know garnered the interest of the larger edtech community and the vcs and you know by now sure so in terms of our growth right so we launched in normal 2018 and the first year itself we got 400 percent growth and then the last financial year we got 350 percent growth and over the last six months we got 230 percent growth and wow. In wow. next six months, we are targeting on 250% growth uh, only for a six months time frame. So mm -hmm. yeah, in terms of growth, we are able to make it substantial. Uh, in terms of funding, we got a pre-series A and got uh, VC with us and heading for the next round. And yeah, things are going great over there in that space as well. Uh, in terms of PNL, we are positive. We are one of the wow. very few in the country that is PNL positive. It's because of the low cap that we have. It's because of the operation right. efficiency that we have been able to bring, considering the PNL of the company, right? So that is a core to the company, right? So uh, yeah, we are able to grow in that aspect as well. And uh, yeah, so these are some of the aspects that nice. help to grow. Nice. And you know, uh, you also mentioned that you don't. Uh, you everyone in the team is sort of unique. Uh, and they bring something very unique to the table also, right? What What are some aspects of the, you know, the culture side of things uh, you can tell us about, especially given that you have such a large team in Lucknow and it's a little different from most of the people we talk to on the show where there are, you know, a bunch of engineers in Bangalore or obviously folks like us who have tech in Bombay. Uh, how have you been able to sort of keep the culture uh, of your company uh, intact with your team in Lucknow and the global uh, team that you said and what makes you unique if you can talk about it sure 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 so in the culture aspect the three values uh that are very keen that are very uh, common among each and every employee of Edigo, each and every team member over here um and we make sure that the all the three values are uh inculcated like the day when you come to Edigo for, for an interview to the day you join and then till your last day right so um yeah so we make sure that our core values are um, propagated in the whole organization so we got three values first always look for a bigger picture uh, mm -hmm. you if you are scaling up you will have losses in the short term you might not uh like the uh, kpis that are with you you might it you might feel that you are getting failed right but if you have a bigger mm -hmm. picture you would be able to grow. So uh, forget about the short-term losses, look for a bigger picture. Second, always be hopeful. The, hmm. As a startup, you are bound to fail, right? So uh, we, for example, in, in a at any point of time, we have around six to seven different innovations going on in the company and 90% mm -hmm. of them fail. So mm -hmm. always be hopeful that, okay. So to get six parents, there's a story of, uh, 50 different experiments that were failed and six were successful, right? So, right. yeah, so you have to be hopeful hopeful for when you have failures, right? So we celebrate our failures. And third, you uh, 
have empathy, have the cultural bit, have the so for example, we being in Lucknow, we have way too many festivals, more than <laughs> what we celebrate in any part of the country. We have way too many holidays by government. So we celebrate together, have fun together. So uh, each and every person knows about each and every person in the company. So it's a family nice. that, that we have built over here. Very nice. I mean, that's rare also, right? Given that, uh, you know, in, in today's world, everything's a remote, it just makes it harder. And B, if you're in like one of these metros, uh, the tech talent especially is so, you know, unattached. Again, I'm not, I know I'm not speaking on behalf of everyone here, but uh, I'm just sort of echoing what most HR people complain about, yeah. saying that <laughs> it's everyone's so flaky about where they want to join and why and whether they want to stick around and then, you know, the job offer. So, uh, as a matter of fact, when a new employee joins at Goyla, and especially if he's experienced, he takes around three to four months to uh, come to our culture, to our open culture, right? Mm -hmm. So, especially for the tech pool, um, they are comparatively more introvert, right? And for them to open up, it takes around three to four months. But when they open up, they, they become part of family, right? So, slowly. And... That's why we probably have one of the very low attrition rate. I, I don't complain about attrition anytime. So, yeah, uh, yeah. people stick with us for a longer duration. Uh, is your nice. personal sure. background like from Lucknow? Uh, I mean, like, where, where have you been? Because I mean, like, Lucknow seems like a unusual choice to start up in, right? I mean, like, so I mean, like, is that where you're from? Right. So I was born in Lucknow. And then I shifted to Farkhabad when I was in first class and then Kanpur in 11th, 12th in Kota. And then I was in South India for around nine years right. and then came to Lucknow around four years back. So yeah, for Lucknow, for me, it was a, yeah, it was a place I was born in, but uh, never lived over here. So interesting. yeah, but I had but the I just... roots from Lucknow, yeah. I, I just find it really interesting that that's uh, like, again, you know, I, the benefits you're mentioning, right? Access to students without much competition. Certain people are not going to want to leave. This seems a very interesting way for like, you know, startups to happen in all kinds of small cities because those similar kind of benefits, I think, would accrue to them, right? I think uh, like like you hear about people in Bangalore and Bombay, like, you know, it, it, these are like death matches for like employees. Right. I mean, like people are just it's impossible to find people. So, I mean, like it's a really interesting way to kind of approach the whole. Uh, and again, I'm not saying that you did it simply for this particular reason, but it's an interesting kind of, you know, second order effect that uh, you're able to kind of get uh, this kind of lack of attrition by live, by being in a smaller town. I find that really cool. Yeah. Right. In fact, most of the startups started moving towards tier two cities. Right. Hmm. Uh, that has been a trend recently. So okay. it's the access yeah. to talent pool on the, the people who don't want to go to other cities. Uh, and it's uh, something that you are giving back to society as well. Right. So you are helping your uh, whole ecosystem where you where you were born and you're helping the people to grow over there as well. Mm -hmm. So as a matter of fact, we, we never realize it, but uh, 60 to 70 percent of the people choose to stay in their hometown. Right? Mm. Very few mm. people, um, 30 to 40 percent, they are ready to go to metros. And that audience, 60 to 70 percent people, uh, they are always left behind. They have talent, but they, they want to mm. live with their family as well. Right? So, right. yeah, it's a good opportunity to tap in. No, that's absolutely true. And, you know, uh, obviously very different from what, like I said, we hear about the situation in the metro where everyone's just scrambling for talent all the time uh it's it's good to see and good to hear uh that this still is a good option for uh startups to think about and future founders in fact you know on that note like mm -hmm. what would you recommend to people who are listening uh let's say who are trying to build in uh the ed tech space or even any other space for that matter uh, and probably are based out of uh you know non-metro cities uh and if you want to do a shout out to uh, you know, if you guys are hiring, uh, where they can reach you, where they can come and talk to you, and uh, anything else you want to talk about. Sure. So my learning for other founders is first, always stick with the fundamentals. Uh, be resili resilient. Be persistent about it. But uh, being fundament, uh, sticking with the fundamentals is the key to growth. Right. You have a much longer 
duration to go for. You are not building just for the valuation sake, but you are build, creating an impact in the society, right? A firm that can last for many years, probably centuries or decades, mm -hmm. right? So that's the first first learning that I had. Being persistent, being resilient, it's, yeah, everyone knows about it. Everyone talks about it. So these are two learnings I had. Uh, mm -hmm. With respect to, yeah, uh, they can, yeah, you, you guys can always reach out to me at uh, on Twitter at my handle is at Rohit Manglik. Uh, you can reach out to Eddie Gorilla at Eddie Gorilla on Twitter. We are on Instagram, Facebook, everywhere. So wherever you want to interact with us, we are over there. Um, yeah. Awesome. Great. Uh, I'd also just like to quickly remind everybody, uh, we appreciate ratings, reviews, whatever you may do. It helps us to kind of spread the word or tell somebody about the podcast. If you enjoyed listening to Rohit's conversation right now, tell somebody else about this conversation. That would be helpful to us as well. So please, we do appreciate the support. Absolutely. And uh, Rohit, you know, to you and the entire team of uh, Edu Gorillas, of course, uh, uh, we're looking forward to where you guys uh, scale next. Uh, and clearly there's so much left to, you know, un un unravel for the students of India and everywhere. So thank you. Thank you so much for sharing your Thanks story. With us. Thanks, Samit. Pleasure connecting thank with you. everyone. You too. Thank you. Bye-bye. I-V-M.